Welcome. The US President Joe Biden has tested positive for COVID. The 79-year-old is fully vaccinated and has twice received booster jabs. His officials say that he has very mild symptoms. He was last seen in public on Wednesday when he gave a speech about the US response to climate change. While well, the White House COVID coordinator says that the president is tired with a runny nose and dry cough. Well, we are told that he is taking the antiviral medicine Paxlovid. The president has been tweeting. He said, folks, I'm doing great and thanks for your concern. He added that he is keeping busy. And he also posted this photo of himself working at his desk in the White House. His press secretary released a statement saying that Mr. Biden was continuing his planned meetings via phone and Zoom. Well, we can speak to Andy Slavitt, who is a former senior advisor to President Biden's COVID-19 response team and i'm sure you are monitoring very closely what is happening with this uh, latest announcement the first time that president biden we're told has had covid how does the white house how does this administration keep operating given the president's diagnosis well uh, about a half an hour ago i spoke to dr ja who will be out speaking to the press uh, shortly and uh, from everything I hear, most importantly, uh, President Biden's feeling fine. He is uh, busy. He is working. He is obviously working in isolation. And, you know, with the modern tools we have, you can actually, of course, both isolate and still be productive and communicate with people, as we've all been doing these last couple of years. Uh, thankfully, he's been vaccinated, as, as you said, double boosted. Uh, he's taking the drug Paxlovid. And uh, those are remarkable tools. And, you know, I, I wish more Americans, more uh, Brits, uh, more uh, people around the globe would avail themselves of those tools because that's what's allowing uh, President Biden to do so well. Well, you say he's doing well. And like we say, he's he, he's saying he's doing great. When it comes to the protocols within the White House for COVID, just give us an understanding of just how strict they are, how rigorously they are in, in, insured. Well, they've been planning for events like this, as, as you can imagine, um, all of these types of scenarios. Uh, you know, the reality is, like a lot of world leaders who've had COVID, um, it's very hard for someone who considers themselves like the president does to be a retail politician who likes mixing it up with people. BA5, which is the virus that's now going around in the U.S., as it had been in the U.K. as well, um, is, as you know, very, very contagious. Uh, very brief exposures uh, can um, allow someone uh, to get it. So, you know, there aren't all the protocols in the world that are going to prevent um, a virus that's this virulent from going around, which is why it's important that everyone is vaccinated and and and, and uh, double boosted, jabbed, as you say. This will, of course, he, he is working. He is taking phone calls. He's been speaking to people, apologising for meetings that he's not uh, uh, able to go to. Of course, we saw him yesterday out and about talking about climate change. Today, he was meant to be in Pennsylvania laying out his plans uh, for crime prevention programmes. Not everything will work remotely. So in terms of the, the, the way that the administration will work, what's the kind of procedure in, in the sense of what gets put on hold and what is looked at immediately? Well, look, I, I expect that, you know, consistent with CDC protocols, he may be isolated for five days. And if he's feeling fine and testing negative, um, he'll be back out on the road. I think he is eager to talk to the public uh, to get back to Pennsylvania, the, uh, the trip he was planning with Senator Casey. Um, and, you know, in the meantime, <clears throat> there's, uh, as you say, a lot of business that can be done. Uh, that was a trip that was scheduled, but other than scheduled trips, um, you can do virtually everything uh, from the White House residence. He's basically, the White House residence, for those who haven't seen the land of the White House, you know, is maybe, you know, 20, 30 feet just across a walkway from the Oval Office in the West Wing. So staff can bring him um, all the briefing materials he needs, uh, and he can continue to do his job very much the same way as if he were sitting 30 feet away in the Oval Office with a staff around him.
And we're seeing the very much the White House press team are getting ready in order to bring us up to date. What kind of level of detail can we expect to hear? Because like, like you say, we know that he's on this particular um, medication for this. What level of detail can we expect to hear once this press conference gets underway? Well, look, this is a this is a White House that is prides itself on transparency. So I suspect they're going to get every question under the sun uh, because that's um, well, appropriate and uh, about his health, about how he's feeling, about medications, um, about what he's able to do. And I, I suspect, well, I know the doctor jobs. I just spoke with him who will be in the briefing. Uh, will answer them very forthrightly. And I think he'll also try to deliver a message that's also very important to the president to say, I got vaccinated, I got boosted, I had access to Paxlovid. We've purchased enough for everybody in the country to do the same, but so many Americans aren't availing themselves of those things. And there are people to whom were, if they were in the situation and had not, didn't have a level of treatment and therapy, um, they would be in a potentially different situation. So I know that the president wants that message to be delivered. I suspect that will be part of what Dr. Jass says. And then I think he'll answer every question he can to the best of his ability. And when it comes to the US, cases are increasing more than 25% in the last month. That's according to the uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention. You have written about the, the, the failures in leadership when it comes to the US response to COVID. I wonder, looking at what we're seeing now with cases on the rise, and yes, vaccinations, of course, on the rise as well, but is that uptake good enough, as you mentioned a bit earlier? What's your assessment of where the US is now when it comes to this pandemic? Well, I think we we'll start with where the world is. Um, the world is um, basically Look, we are dealing with a virus that's circulating about as frequently as the common cold. It's just continually moving across the globe. And each time it moves back, it looks different because it is uh, mutating um, very aggressively. So what you're dealing with one day is different from what you're dealing with the next day. If there were consistency, if we were dealing with the same virus, no matter how bad it was, um, over and over again, um, you have a much greater chance of defeating it and preventing illness. So. Uh, given that that's the case, um, we are very fortunate that we have now we have vaccines and we have scientific tools like Paxlovid, which is a, a therapeutic to allow people to not go to the hospital and to do well. Uh, but having said that, um, you know, we do not see um, an end in sight for this sort of continual uh, infection and reinfection. And it's, it's happening in, in the U.S. and it's happening around the globe. And uh, it's important, I think, that people recognize that even if they feel safe and if they feel healthy, that that's not the case with everybody, that there are people out there to, that are quite vulnerable and at a higher risk. And so I hope that people take stock, whether it's the U.S. or anywhere else, um, and do a better job taking stock of the fact that this is still a risky condition for lots of people, as much as we'd like to put it out of our heads. Andy, thanks very much for just reminding ourselves that people do still feel vulnerable. They do still have concerns and are worried. Andy Slavitt, former senior advisor to President Biden's COVID-19 response team, also author of Preventable, which looks at the leadership failures when it comes to the US coronavirus response. This is, of course, the live shot from the White House. We are expecting a press conference to take place. We're expecting the White House press secretary and also the White House COVID coordinator to bring us up to date. And as Andy was saying, the Biden administration very keen to be transparent. They've given us a statement as to the condition of the president himself. He says he is feeling good. He's working, has got a runny nose. But as and when that press conference starts, of course, we'll bring that to you.